one, a two, a one. It's time for the Better Horses Radio Show. So let's saddle up and ride as we explore the Western way of life, horses and cows, family and friends, a relationship with the land and a relationship with God. It's all here on Better Horses Radio. Now let's hit the trails with the Better Horses team. And welcome to Better Horses. We appreciate you joining us. And I got to tell you, this is going to be one show that we're really going to enjoy. But first, let me welcome my co-host, Merle Arbo. Well, hi, Ed. How are you doing today? You know, I'm doing great because we have a great lineup of guests coming in with the Better Horses radio show. Now, we're going to plug again Better Horses and Better Cattle. And we're going to dovetail what we did last week about processors and yeah. meat marketing and all that kind of fun stuff. Yes. Well, that'll be good. Now, we've got a great show lined up. So coming up right off the bat, the headliner of Equifest going on right now, Guy McLean. He's an international equine performer and educator, and he's from Australia, spent a lot of time. He goes six months in Texas, six months in Australia. This is going to be somebody you're really going to listen to. And our second segment is Mandy Wigan. She's the operator of the Wigan Ranch. Some of you might have been up there if you're local. Uh, the Machine Set Arena is in their family. You know, they're going to dovetail onto processing and going direct meat marketing to the consumer. That's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And it's a whole different kind of like a sea change for all the cattle industry. Yes. And then we're going to wrap it up with Sarah Befford, Director of Events of American Royal Association, upcoming rodeos in the pro rodeos and also in the junior rodeo. And Merle, this is kind of exciting because we're going to celebrate their 125th anniversary for the American Royal. I think the American Royal is one of Kansas City's most iconic events, and it's been around for ages now. And and a lot of us remember even as kids going. And so that always holds a special place in my heart. So we ask you to stay with better horses. But before we get started, let's have a quick equine tip of the day. We're here at Silvertooth Stables, located in Kansas City, Missouri. And with us today, we're with the finest veterinarian clinics of the Midwest, Will Height and Freeze. And with me today, Dr. Traha, who's given us the equine tip of the week on the importance of floating. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Ed. Uh, the most important thing here from a float perspective in reality is the sedated oral exam. When we come out for our wellness exams, we can get a general overview of how things look. But the best exam comes once we're sedate in a speculum. I can see the back of the mouth. So I would say that's the biggest tip, and that should be done every one, potentially, to two years. If in a young, healthy horse, I generally recommend it as much as possible to do it yearly so that you're not missing multiple years. But that's the best uh, tip I have for this week. So one question, if we choose not to float, what are some of the ramifications of horses that can go through? Yeah, so the biggest issue we have when we are floating teeth, we're knocking off some sharp points in certain portions of the mouth. Uh, those points will cause ulceration, kind of road rash on the inside of the cheeks, sometimes road rash on the tongue itself. Um, so the reality is the horse is going to be less interested in chewing appropriately, potentially have some tack issues. Um, so it's, it's more of kind of keeping the, how, the mouth as maintained and healthy as possible. And the reason for the floating, what type of tools do you use to pull that together? Yeah, ours, ours these days, they're called Terra Floats. They are um, a pneumatic, it used to be a pneumatic drive, but these are all electric drives. They're uh, fancy sandpaper, uh, protected fancy sandpaper. So we're knocking off those portions of the teeth a little better than the old school rasp, even better than the pneumatic floats of 10 or 15 years ago. Very uh, quality pieces of equipment. And that's it for our tip of the week. We'll be right back right after these sponsors. Internal parasite control is critical to your horse's health, but isn't always easy. Some worms are as stubborn as they are dangerous. Luckily, there's Panicure Finbendazole from Merck Animal Health. It works in a powerful and extremely safe way, so it's tough on parasites, but gentle on horses, making it a safe choice for foals, weanlings, and even thin or debilitated horses. Consult your veterinarian for assistance in the diagnosis, treatment, and control of parasitism, and ask how Panicure can become part of your deworming strategy. Learn more at MerckAnimalHealthUSA.com. We're here for the hardworking, the resilient, 
We're for the people who measure their days by what needs to get done, not by ours. Where kids learn responsibility at a young age and generations work side by side. Where work doesn't pause for holidays or bad weather, it just gets harder. Where value and hard work means more than the clothes you wear. We're Kleinschmidt's Western Store, Higginsville, Missouri. Routine dental examination and treatments are essential for high quality horse care. To prevent potential problems, a horse's mouth should be examined at least once a year. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins, equine field service veterinarian at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center. We can examine the mouth and provide a treatment plan to meet the needs of each client and their horse. Visit us at ksvhc.org, the Veterinary Health Center, to discover, to teach, to heal. It's time to mark your calendar for one of the top horse events of the season, the 27th Annual Equifest of Kansas. This all-breed horse fair is coming to Salina, Kansas, beginning Thursday, March 14th through Sunday, March 17th. World-renowned clinicians including Guy McLean, the Jerry Diaz family, Julie Goodnight, Patrick Sullivan, and Sally Batten. Catch a special Thursday night show, plus the most popular competitions with ranch rodeo, barrel race, and breakaway roping. Wall-to-wall -wall shopping for all things horse. For more information, go to equifestofks.com. And welcome back to Better Horses. We appreciate you joining us. And hey, if you haven't checked us out, check us out at betterhorses.com, which you can hear us not only on the radio, but we have a TV show airing on RFD, the Cowboy Channel, and now Equus TV. And Merle, yeah. I don't know if everybody knows this, but they can check us out on our podcast. So if you miss this radio show, you can check us out on Better Horses on any wherever you get your podcast. Yeah, Spotify or... Uh... Any, any of those places. That's, that's yeah. kind of neat. Yeah, that is kind of good. And it's, you know, what's really kind of, we talked about this. We've been promoting this event for a long time. And this is Equifest, which is going to be held in Salina, Kansas, March 14th through the 17th. Actually going on right now. But one of the headliners that is going to be performing at Equifest, we have him with us today. And Guy McLean from Melbourne, Australia. And this is where he was born. He's one of the youngest of five strapping guys. What's interesting about Guy, that with all of his talents and horsemanship, Merle, you, I don't know if you know this, but he didn't grow up with horses. Actually, he grew up in the inner city. And he oh, wow. became one of the most well-known horsemen with a lot of knowledge, compassion, patience, patience and imagination. I memorized that part. <laughs> with horses that we've ever seen. He's really a true talent. I want to welcome him to Better Horses. Guy McLean, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. I was born in Melbourne, but we moved to, my, my family moved to Queensland when I was one. So I've been around horses since I was 16 months old and know nothing else and don't want to know anything else. And I'm very excited to be at this wonderful event and excited to be on this great radio show with you all. You know, that's that's a great radio show. Just talking about horses, you are truly the major equine event of the Equifest coming up. But, you know, Guy, you've done a lot of things, and I and I don't want to, you know, understate this. I mean, Road to the Horse winner, you've done a lot of great events with horses. What's the one thing you want to talk to our listeners that, obviously, we all have horses, that you find to be the most beneficial thing when you're training horses? I, I think the biggest thing that a horse looks for in life the thing that's most important with him is, is his own safety. Um, we go into the horse world with, with desires for ribbons and trophies and accolades and, and applause. A horse just wakes up every day and hopes that he can make it through to tomorrow. So the biggest thing that we can do for a horse is to be a leader worth following. A lot of us, uh, you know, we're either being a leader to our horses or we're being a follower and, and the very best horses, well, they, they'd like to lead, but if they can find a follower who can lead them better, they'll give their heart over to them. So, doing everything that we can to encapsulate that being uh, that of being a leader worth following is what I devote my whole life to. And I try to be in everything that I do. I try to be the reflection that I see in my horse's eyes. And that is a, a kind and confident leader who always has their best interests at heart. You know, you've had a couple of horses that you've held on to for a very long time. Uh, talk to us about some of your lineage that you had, uh, more importantly, the stallion you had in nugget and how that shaped your life. Yeah, well, when, when I got my, my beautiful dad has just, just passed away a week ago. So he's always in my mind and my heart. And I remember him, 
I said to him, because I worked for my dad from the time I was 15 till I was 24, taking horse rides at, at dad's resort. And when you take horse rides for, for trail as a trail boss, um, you work the horses in your own time to get them to a level where they're understanding you and feeling of you. And then through the day, you're putting guests on them and the guests are going there just to have a good time. And, and the horses are a little bit like rented mules, as sad as it is. And and so I would say to dad, dad, I'm putting all the time into these horses and we put the guests on them and they're just not, they're not riding the same. And when I, I feel like I'm having to fix things all the time, I would really love it if I could could start to up my horsemanship. Um, would you allow me to go and buy some young horses and I'll educate them in my own time at night and I'll I'll train them and, and then sell them and then build my business because I'd like to be a world-renowned horseman one day. And I had no idea what that looked like. I just knew in my heart that I wanted it. So dad said, all right, I'll give you $1,000, but you've got to get as many horses as you can and uh, you've got to do it all yourself and you need to pay me back as soon as you're able. So at, at 21 years of age, we go out in Dad's old cattle truck and we buy five horses and Nugget was the most expensive as a $200 colt out of a bush paddock. And Dad said to me, you'll have to geld him, son. He's not staying material. And I, I nodded and said, yes, Dad. And then I, I hid him away from Dad and, and worked on him and trained on him. And by the time he was a four-year-old, Dad said, I'm so glad I told you to keep him as a stallion, son. He's a beauty. And we performed all over Australia with him. He was the horse that believed in me when no one else really did. Uh, I was able to try things with him that, that wasn't traditional. And I'm really grateful that I that I, I used to wish that I'd grown up in a traditional household with, with many generations of horsemanship in my veins, but I, I didn't. But what I did have was my mum and dad said, we want you to have a good time. We want you to take care of your horses and yourselves and above all, have fun. And, and I've been able, that's, really what my whole career with horses has been is is every day I get up to go out and be with my very best friends and that dear old nugget is 29 now he's lost most of his teeth he's gray all around the face he he, he walks a lot slower than he did but in him I, I see a saying that that has been with me since the beginning of my professional career and, and a, a saying that will always run in my heart and he's just incredibly special and I have a son of his here in America I'm not actually bringing him he's having a a, a time off to bring some young horses on but hope is 24 and still going strong is the oldest son of nugget and then i have a an incredible gelding called spin abbey that can canter backwards and canter sideways and canter in place and just the most amazing horse and it feels a bit funny not having them on the, the trailer but in but instead of them we have a, a beautiful three-year-old that i'm bringing to, to show the early stages of training and i'm got a gorgeous four-year-old from the prefect ranch that's doing some amazing things so life does go on but i, I certainly honor the greats of the past while i'm bringing on the greats of the future you know one of the things staying motivated doing this for your whole life what's the difference between aussie stockmanship and what you see in the domestic united states i know you're living in texas now do you see a big difference between the two countries um, we spend about six months of the year in, in Australia and six months in Texas and spend a little bit of time in Canada as well. We're very blessed to, to live and, and stay on the Prefit Ranch. The Prefit make all the wonderful gear that you see in the NFR and the PBR, and, and they're like family to us. So we actually build Prefit's place. We stay below him at the moment, and, and then we can drive from his place, drive 10 minutes, still be on the Prefit Ranch and, and go to see our horses. Um, there is some, some definite differences in as much as the... The Australian country is, um, there's a lot of wooded timber. So if you watch the man from Snowy River, a lot of our country is like that. So uh, we don't have horns on our saddles because you can't gallop through the timber and keep your head below the branches chasing cows with a horn. And also, uh, we don't have to rope our cattle. Um, we probably only handle our cattle two or three months a year. We bring them into yard systems and run them through a through a crust set up. Whereas I know in America, because of, your incredible temperature changes you have to work your cattle and, and rope your sick ones well we, when I first come here they said where's your horn and I said well we, we don't need it. and they said how do you doctor your sick cattle and we say well we very rarely have any sicknesses we have a something called a three-day sickness which if they get it they'll either get over it or the older ones will, will pass away but then you know we don't have any troubles with that so we just bring them in to brand them and castrate them um our Something we were taught very much as kids that's very different. I remember my dad saying this a lot, hands down, heels down and mouth shut. Um, he wanted us to keep our hands and our heels down. So we're very much an English base of riding the stockman. So we'd either have our hands rested on our horse's neck or just an inch or two above like an English rider. But then our horses needed to be able to stop and turn like, like a, a cowboy's horse. So when I'm riding my, my horses, if I'm working on my flying changes, I sit up very much like an English rider. If I'm 
working on my stops and turns. I absolutely sit down like a like a cutter and a rainer. And but there, there, there's a lot of similarities. My dearest friend Nate Prefet is a is a cattleman, so he knows how to to read a cow and take care of his stock. And that's the same for for both for being an Australian stockman or an American cowboy. And, and we just love to be able to immerse ourselves in both. But I, I worked cattle with them just the other day. I'll be back in Australia working cattle and starting horses. So we're very blessed to be able to spend about half the year in each each country, which both of them are very important to us. So, Guy, you know, we've been talking about Equifest now for a while, and, and several of our listeners have been there, and there's several listeners that, that have not. So could you tell us, you know, what to expect? You know, if they're maybe are on the fence about coming to watch, what, you know, so I'm really excited to be back at this wonderful event. It'll be my third time there. And the last two times I've started a young horse. So in, in one of my sessions, they would bring me a, a horse that's never been ridden. And over those three sessions, I would take them through my starting process. And by the third day, I was riding those horses, working my, my team of four Liberty horses. And um, this time is going to be something a little different. I'll be bringing a young horse that's, that's had about seven or eight rides on the Prefit Ranch, um, starting to do some nice things. We're still very, very early in her education, and I'll be showing the, the continued work I do. I'll go back through the steps of the very first ride. I'll, I'll show the, the things that I do before I ride them. Safety is the most important thing in my horsemanship, safety for the horse and safety for the rider. And from there, we can do many great things. So the first session will will be on the basis of that. And then by the third session, I'll, I plan on to be riding her bridalist, working my Liberty team. She's already showing some lovely glimpses. She's had about eight rides over the last year because I'm always away, busy traveling. And then the other demonstrations will be using my Liberty horses and showcasing the highest level of horsemanship that I've been able to develop. And that is where your horses are not at, no longer just your workmates, no longer even just my friends. They've become part of my family. And so I'll be showcasing the, the skills that I used to do that. I've got a beautiful young mare that's, that's never really done Liberty um, other than one-on-one -on -one stuff. So I'll actually be showcasing how I would integrate a new horse into the team. And that there'll be, she'll make a lot of mistakes and I'll be able to help uh, show her and show the audience how we go through that, all using the skills of the stockman. So I'll basically be using the same skills that I've used to, to herd cattle and, and and bring cattle into mobs. I'll be using the same skills to join up a Liberty team. And then at night, I come out with my Liberty team and I just have a wonderful time with the audience. I get to talk about my beloved country, about the skills of the stockman, the three horses that I'm bringing. I have a world champion from Road to the Horse called Maid. I have a, a very pretty gelding, a, a thoroughbred gelding that goes back to Affirmed and Danzig, that won the triple crown in the racehorse world. And then I have one of the biggest, biggest uh, characters that I've ever had. He's only 13 hands high. His name is Denny. He goes back to Hollywood, done it. And, and he's just the funniest little fella. He'll tell a bunch of jokes in, in the show. He always puts on something new. And I'll be riding a, a darling little four-year-old mare that goes back to Hollywood, done it, and smart Chickalina, bred on the Prefit Ranch. And she's going to have her very first performance as my main horse. So I, I always say to people, expect the unexpected. Uh, expect what you expect from someone who's devoted their life to these horses and works at the highest level that they contain each day and then expect things that you've never seen before. But most of all, be ready to come along and have a great time because I most certainly do. You know, everybody, if you just joined us, we're talking to Guy McLean, the international equine performer and educator. Guy, if somebody couldn't get to Equifest, which is going on right now, how can they get a hold of you and can you give them your website? Um, I, I'm, on, I'm on Facebook. Uh, there's, there's a couple of sites. I'm the public figure one with the most. With, we've got about 200,000 likes on it. I haven't been doing a lot on it lately, but we, we still put up a lot of our events and that there. And then my website is guy mcleancomau uh, .com, guy mcleancom My darling wife, Emily, sitting beside me. Not when I do the right thing and shaking her head when I'm out of line. <laughs> okay. Well, a special thanks to your better half, Emily, for putting all this together. And again, that's guy mclanecom You can see him in Equifest going on right now. And uh, and it's great that we see you bringing on those young horses because I know you were at the uh, Road to the Horse and you won 2013. That's going on March 13th or 21st through the 24th and that'll be in lexington kentucky guy we want to thank you for joining us here on better horses thank you very much for having us and we look forward to seeing as many people as we can at this wonderful event all right stay with us you're going to have more better horses merle we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back right after a word from our sponsors
Internal parasite control is critical to your horse's health, but isn't always easy. Some worms are as stubborn as they are dangerous. Luckily, there's Panicure Finbendazole from Merck Animal Health. It works in a powerful and extremely safe way, so it's tough on parasites, but gentle on horses, making it a safe choice for foals, weanlings, and even thin or debilitated horses. Consult your veterinarian for assistance in the diagnosis, treatment, and control of parasitism. And ask how Panicure can become part of your deworming strategy. Learn more at MerckAnimalHealthUSA.com. We're here for the hardworking, the resilient. We're for the people who measure their days by what needs to get done, not by hours. Where kids learn responsibility at a young age and generations work side by side. Where work doesn't pause for holidays or bad weather. It just gets harder. Where value and hard work means more than the clothes you wear. We're Klein Schmidt's Western Store, Higginsville, Missouri. Routine dental examination and treatments are essential for high quality horse care. To prevent potential problems, a horse's mouth should be examined at least once a year. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins, equine field service veterinarian at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center. We can examine the mouth and provide a treatment plan to meet the needs of each client and their horse. Visit us at ksvhc.org the Veterinary Health Center, to discover, to teach, to heal. And welcome back to Better Horses. And you know, Merle, one of the exciting things we get to do is talk about better cattle. And this is going to be a dovetail from our show last week. And if you haven't heard from our show, be sure to pick up on our podcast uh, where we had actually Chelsea Good, our Vice President of Livestock Marketing Association, and she was talking about direct meat marketing. Yes. And it was very kind of, it was it was interesting. You and I had a, had a fun time with that show, and I wanted to dovetail this segment into what we talked about last week, and that's having Mandy Wiegand, who's a horseman and also operator of Wiegand Ranch, and she has really a nice direct consumer marketing program together. And let me tell you how I, I ran into this lady is I'm sitting in Odessa, Missouri in the middle of nowhere, go into a antique store and there off to the side is a refrigerator packed full of meat. And that just intrigued me. So Merle, I know you and I talked about direct marketing. So let's welcome aboard Mandy Wiegan, operator of Wiegan Ranch right here in mid Missouri. Mandy, thank you for joining us here at Better Horses. Hi, thanks, Ed. Thanks for having me today. It was sure a joy to get to talk to you the other day, and we're just going to continue the conversation, I guess. <laughs> you know, I was fascinated by it because processors, you know, direct meat marketing has always been a conversation. Uh, COVID really kind of like took everybody by surprise and more of the cattlemen. So this kind of like dovetailed into what you're doing. So walk us through and how you changed your operation to your cow-calf operation. Yeah, thanks. So we didn't really change much, but we got to expand, which was uh, very optimal, I guess would be the word I would use, um, because we've done all the other pieces and it just fit really well together. Um, the reason why we did it was because people around us were asking because of COVID, they wanted a direct source. And we had the cattle, we had the quality, and we just needed to put that last little piece together of um, getting it into their freezer, which didn't take much because the finishing process, we weren't far off. So, <laughs> and we already finished cattle out for ourselves. So it was, it just worked out hand in hand. Okay. So let's, let's get down to the basics here for those who mm -hmm. are not into the cattle industry and for our listeners that are not familiar with what the ranching process is. So the rancher goes to the stockyard, the stockyards go to the packing plants, packing plants go to the retailer. Yes. You took out the packing plants. Yep. And the and, feed yard to the, for the most part. And for the feed yard. So Merle, I'm going to let you have on the next question. But the one thing I did want to tell the audience is I thought was really interesting statistics. Four years ago, ranchers were getting 60% of every dollar sold for cattle. It's now reduced down to 30% because of this process. Yep. So what I mean, was that a gen, was that a reason for it or would you finding it just a better way of dealing with the consumer 
Well, mainly because we've had the request for it. The demand was there and we had the ways to fulfill that demand. Um, it is a perk to cut the middleman out. However, I do appreciate those middlemen because it is a lot of work to feed out and then, you know, take it to the processor and do all the communicating between me and the customer. So there is a lot of work they do and it is valuable. So I don't want them to go away. However, I want my customers to have the option to to see our whole story. Like I can tell you the lineage of all the cattle that we have as options for beef. So they really like to know that. They wanna see how I take care of the cattle. Um, it's a, it's really nice to package it all together. And I think that's what the customer wanted instead of trying to go through a guy that they don't know where they got the meat from. Yeah, I think that's a good point because the, the beef industry you go to the grocery store, we all know it got there. We're not really sure how or what conditions those those livestock had to go through. Can you tell us about some other benefits, you know, of, of direct to consumer marketing for the consumers? For me, the biggest part personally, so I'm a part of a group of people, my husband, his brother, my father-in-law, the whole bunch of us. But my heart is on education, and that right there is key. Between the nutrition, um, uh, how we grow them, uh, people just don't know. And having that knowledge makes them feel more empowered um, and makes them feel like they actually know what they're feeding their families. And, and they, are, they found that that's really important now, especially after COVID and some of the weird ways that we're taking some of this protein <laughs> sources. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good point too, is uh, for me, I think the quality is better. Mm -hmm. it, it's fresher. I think it, it's, you know, like the, the lead, lag time is a little quicker from, you know, feed yard to freezer. Right. Yeah. And quality for me is uh, important because of the genetics, uh, genetics are where you get your quality. You can feed them all kinds of different ways, but if the genetics aren't there and as a perk for somebody like me, who's a seed stock operation, we raise bulls, we raise heifers, you know, we're trying to do a maternal kind of herd. Inevitably the carcass is coming along with, uh, because the genetics are there as well. So it's not, we're not focused on just making a really fat calf, you know, like some, some operations. And so the sure. nutritional value is what ends up being shining through. Now, Mandy, I looked at that marbling and that marbling was absolutely fabulous, but let's talk about some of the challenges you have and more importantly about keeping the demand there. Right. So the demand is the hardest part to factor, right? Because I don't know who's who's going to want what if I, they want a half a beef, a whole beef, or if they're just wanting a smaller portion and buying from the retail side of stuff and me keeping back cattle and how many. That's my biggest challenge at the moment because I'm trying to create these relationships um, to, for them to know the quality that you saw, <laughs> what they're buying and how to get a hold of it. And so finding opportunities to put this, uh, product out into the public instead of them having to come to me, that's, uh, another opportunity for me to get out there, but they have to learn where to find what I can provide for them. So you're a really great marketing person. So do you find social media still beneficial or do you, how to get out to that public to tell them what you're doing? I think it find it's very beneficial for, to buy local. That's a big thing now. Right. And so what's your biggest avenue? What's your channel that you like to use? Right now it's mostly through Facebook um, because I've tried other social medias. It's just neat part of the story, but Facebook directly. And honestly, it's the community groups that I get most of my customers from. So like the local towns around here, they ask questions. Where can I get this? Here I am. Here I go. So that's that's probably been the biggest. I get a lot of questions just from the magnet on the side of my truck. <laughs> so that's the other one. But I necessarily haven't had a bite yet, but lots of questions. <laughs> Let's talk about the breeding program. What type of cattle do you run and uh, what kind of crosses do you run? So most of our herd is Angus influenced at this point. We've had cattle for many years, but we've used all Angus bulls on them. Uh, so yeah, mostly Angus at this point um, because of the seed stock operation. That's a perk we have is we get to keep some of those bulls back for ourselves and breed our commercial herd. Now, when I say commercial herd, it just means that it's not registered. A lot less paperwork for Mandy. <laughs> and that's, that, that's a dovetail to a really good question. Let's talk about the inspection. So obviously USDA and, uh, you know, Angus certified beef. So that's actually a process with, that we talked about that's into the packing plant. How do they certify when you go? Well, the packing plant has the perk. They have a grader on site. They actually take pictures of the beef and get to USDA grade. That's the hardest part for a small 
small time outfit like me is finding somewhere that can inspect it with for us it's just state inspected at this point but we could go to a usda and that's where you get um the option for a grader graders are even harder to find so when you don't see a prime choice select on your product at these smaller uh places that you can buy your beef that's because those graders are harder to find the packers have that uh perk so they're trying to and i think it's a pilot program to get to these smaller um in processing plants. And I'm hoping we'll be able to do that because I think our products will grade really high based on, well, the way it tastes and the way it looks. Well, and that's wrapping it up what we were talking about. Uh, your quality hasn't got degraded in any way. Mm -hmm. And this is a way of keeping our ranchers. And we talked about the dollar getting you mm -hmm. back up to where you should be and, and receiving the most amount of revenue you can for the amount of work in which you're doing. Right. Yeah, once we get uh, a clientele and a base, we'll be able to get, uh, we'll be able to maximize on those profits. Right now, I'm not maximizing as much on my profits because I'm still trying to build that clientele, but the product will speak for itself and the people will be fighting over it um, the more they know about it. That's the best part for me. <laughs> and while you've doing this, and because I haven't done retail before in the meat, what's the shelf life that you can look at into the refrigerator? Well, I provide a frozen product. So what you saw was a freezer. And so that is nice because you can have, oh, quite a little while. Um, honestly, I don't know what the recommendation is, but you could keep it as long as you keep your freezer nice and, and, and clean and defrosted and all that stuff. So it's quite a long shelf life. Um, so if you want to come and get a whole or a half a beef, you can then have a full year's worth for your family. Um, and that's important. And uh, I can keep a whole half a beef and provide to my retail stores as well. It's one of the biggest thing cow-calf operations are trying to figure out the best way to get to the consumer without mm -hmm. losing any quality. So, Mandy, really appreciate you coming on board. I really am going to enjoy it. Merle and I are going to go to your sorting pen uh, over there in <laughs> Missouri. I know Merle's training right now, so uh, you offer a lot of great ranching opportunities and for our horses, so we appreciate that, too. You bet. You bet. Thanks for having me on. So, before we go, let us know how we can get a hold of you. You mentioned Facebook. Why don't you tell us the name and on your website? Wigand Ranch, and it's wigandranch.com. Wigand is spelled W-E-I-G-A-N-D. So just find, search it, you'll find us. All right, that's Mandy Wigand, horseman and operator at Wigand Ranch. Mandy, we appreciate you joining us. Merle, we got to take a break. Well, yes, we do, but we will be right back. Right after these messages. Hi, I'm Dr. Dylan Luter, a specialist in equine performance medicine at the Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center. Our new service focuses on lameness diagnosis, advanced imaging, physical therapy, and regenerative medicine for horses with injuries preventing them from performing at their best. We can treat a variety of conditions and design a customized rehabilitation plan to meet the needs of each client and their horse. Visit us at ksvhc.org, the Veterinary Health Center, to discover, to teach, to heal. Hi, I'm Tommy with Heritage Tractor. Whether you're looking to maintain your yard or your whole ranching operation, Heritage Tractor has John Deere mower and tractor packages that make work fly by. With a variety of horsepower and attachment configurations, we have a package to best fit your needs and budget. To learn more about these exclusive packages, visit us in store or online at HeritageTractor.com. Legendary products, extraordinary service, that's our heritage. Established in 1956, the Pinto Horse Association of America was formed to welcome all types of equines and maintain their show records and pedigrees. PTHA currently has over 88,000 members with 157,000 registered Pintos. There are currently three separate registries, the Color Registry, the Solid Registry, and the Long Ear Registry. We welcome all levels of competition within a family-friendly environment. Become a member, register, and add value to your horse. For more information, check out the website Pinto World. Com. Runny nose, cough, fever. It's flu season for humans and horses. Like human flu vaccines, equine flu vaccines must be updated to protect against the flu strains circulating now. Merck Animal Health's flu-containing vaccines include the most current flu strains, protecting your horse from illness and time mistraining because of it. Talk with your veterinarian about prestige flu vaccines and learn more about the science of advanced protection at prestigevaccines.com. We're here for the hardworking, the resilient. We're for the people who measure their days by what needs to get done, not by hours. 
where kids learn responsibility at a young age and generations work side by side. Where work doesn't pause for holidays or bad weather, it just gets harder. Where value and hard work means more than the clothes you wear. We're Kleinschmidt's Western Store, Higginsville, Missouri. It's time to go with United Mosquito and Fly Control's premier fly system for fly control in your barn. Providing relief for horses from the stress of fighting flies. And also makes a barn more pleasant for everyone in the barn. Easy, effective, and safe. With United Mosquito and Fly Control, we provide a full service. You as the barn owner don't have to do anything. We go everywhere and take care of everything with our friendly, fast service. Call today at 913-558-3814 or email paul at unitedmosquito.com. It's time to mark your calendar for one of the top horse events of the season, the 27th annual Equifest of Kansas. This all-breed horse fair is coming to Salina, Kansas, beginning Thursday, March 14th through Sunday, March 17th. World-renowned clinicians including Guy McLean, the Jerry Diaz family, Julie Goodnight, Patrick Sullivan, and Sally Batten. Catch a special Thursday night show, plus the most popular competitions with ranch rodeo, barrel race, and breakaway roping. Wall-to-wall -wall shopping for all things horse. For more information, go to equifestofks.com. And welcome back to Better Horses. Hey, Merle, I want to tell you this segment is brought to you by one of my favorite sponsors, Heritage Tractor, who has multiple locations around the Midwest. Yeah, it's the time of year. Everybody's getting out and about. It's going to need a tractor implement. So, so look them up. What I love about this Heritage Tractor, and I have tractors and also a, a lot of equipment, I can send it off to them and they turn it around really well. So the service department is second to none. And check them out at Heritage Tractor. Appreciate them sponsoring the show. With us today, we're going to talk about rodeos. That's the thing. We're all getting legged up and uh, talking about everything that's going on. I want to obviously introduce one of the best American Royal managers that we have, Sarah Peffert, Director of Events of the American Royal. Sarah, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. So this is exciting because everybody's getting ready for the rodeo season. You are now ahead and always have been the director of events. Talk to us, talk to us about the youth and the pro and the upcoming rodeos. Yes, of course. So we have our youth rodeo that is coming up on April 24th through the 26th. Uh, we tie this in with our field trips. So it is a awesome experience for our youth rodeo competitors. Um, they are in an environment like no other um, because there is a thousand school kids screaming and cheering them on. And um, it's just a great environment. We we get kids from all over the Midwest and we actually partner with the Huey Junior Patriot um, as a regional qualifier. So the kids that are competing at our youth rodeo can also be qualified for the Junior Patriot as well. Um, so that event, um, it is actually in its 25th year. We've been doing that for, for quite a while. We've got a lot of anniversaries this year, um, with our pro rodeo being its 75th year and the overall American Royal in its 125th. So a lot to celebrate this year. Uh, the pro rodeo is actually going to be the week after that first weekend of May, May 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Uh, it starts at seven o'clock every night. Um, this is a PRCA, WPRA, sanctioned rodeo, one of the only in our region. Um, it's big money added. So we get a lot of the top contestants that come out um, and compete in that rodeo. It's a great time. Saturday is Kentucky Derby. So we have a big watch party for that and encourage everyone to wear their best hats and have a good time with it. We do a lot of different theme nights. Um, we're going to have a college night on Thursday and then Friday is going to be all Kansas City sports and KC Strong. So really looking forward to that. Um, all tickets are on sale right now. You can get those at AmericanRoyal.com and look forward to having everybody out. And Sarah, is it too late if, if somebody's at home listening and they want to get in the, the youth rodeo, especially it coming up, is our entry still open and available? They are still open, yes. And those are on our website as well. They can enter um, up to the middle of April. So you still got about another month that you can enter. Okay, so we have the youth rodeo coming out and that's going to be on May 
April 24th through the 26th. And then you've got the Pro Rodeo coming, which is going to be May 2nd through the 4th. And let's talk about the American Royal. You mentioned some anniversaries. So this is actually a big year for the American Royal. It is. Yes, it's our 125th anniversary. And so we have a lot of exciting things happening. Um, you'll just have to wait until after our annual meeting where we are announcing a lot of those things that we're going to be doing this year. Um, but a lot of a lot of history and tradition that we're going to be celebrating this year. Um, we exist to champion food and agriculture, and we're just going to be doing that all throughout the year. Now, for our national listening audience, American Royal is started here in Kansas City. And Sarah, I don't want you to go into a lot of detail, but you're expanding uh, the new American Royal and how the, how is that going? And, and can you kind of walk us through that? For sure. Yes. Yeah. So we have been located in Kansas City since 1899 down here in the West Bottoms in the old stockyards. Um, we are planning on moving and construction has started Um out by the speedway and on the Kansas side for those familiar with the area. Um, so we actually have a live video stream of the construction site on our website. So if anyone wants to look that up and, and see where we're at with that, you're more than welcome to. Um, we have started on the barns and it's going to be five gables and you'll see that they've started on the second one. So it is coming along nicely. Um, it is expected to be completed by the end of 2025. So that is not that far away. Um, we're, we're very excited to have new state of the art facility. It's gonna be a great location right off the, the interstates, not far from the airport and um, just really excited to have a new, new facility, a new home. Now, Sarah, you've been working for the American Royal for over 11 years. Now you worked at, with livestock and you were a ranch hand at one time, I heard in Colorado, there's a rumor, I don't know if that's true or not, but talk to me about you specifically. You're still very much active in the in the uh, rodeo and in the horsemanship. Yes. Yeah, so I grew up on our family ranch, fifth generation in Northeastern Nevada and um, yeah, grow up actually riding, roping, doing all the things that you have to do on the ranch to take care of the, the cattle and, and our horses, of course, a um, big part of that. In Nevada, you, you have to use horses. So you've got mountains and brush and there's no uh, four wheelers and things like that. You, you've got to be able to actually move move the cattle from pasture to pasture on, on horseback. So great appreciation with that um, growing up and watching rodeos and taking the things that you actually do on the ranch and putting that into a competition form and continuing um, that Western heritage is, is really my, my passion and for people to, to understand that. And you know, Ed, we've shot a couple of uh, episodes, Better Horses episodes out at the American Royal. And it's always interesting to to see not only the the rodeo, but the horse shows, the cattle shows. It, to piggyback on to our last segment, uh, <laughs> the barbecue contest. So can you tell us about other events and, and what you got planned longer term? For sure. Yeah, we have events all year round. We kind of get started with everything in the spring with the rodeo, but uh, starting in August, we've got horse shows all throughout the fall. Like you said, our livestock show runs the whole month of October, and then we've got the barbecue actually the first weekend of November this year. So we've got things happening all the time at the American Royal. We've got a full list of our, our calendar uh, events on our website as well um, for everyone to check out. You know, that's a really good point. We have the, you have the cutting horse show, the quarter horse show, the UPHA American Royal show, but nothing really amazes me. If you haven't been there, you should. The Arabian show, which is like over the top on everything. And I know, Sarah, you've seen that many a times. Kind of walk our, our listeners to what that's all about. Yeah, so it is a great show. Um, to your point, they they definitely get dressed up and there's a great pageantry with that um, and a great show to see for sure. Um, the Arabian breed is a beautiful breed and we get a lot of horses from all over the area um, for that show. So definitely if you have Arabians, you can enter that or just to come watch that. It's It's one of a kind. 
you know, that's perfect. You know, this is, we're talking about the American Royal and we're talking about the director of events at the American Royal. Her name is Sarah Beffert, and she's been with the American Royal for over 11 years. This has been a real mainstay in Kansas City, and we're excited they're expanding to a really high level, almost like a ag central place for all agriculture around the around the Midwest. Yes, yes. We are hoping to be the epic center of agriculture and um, really drawing events nationally, regionally, um, and having that full year round with a lot of educational pieces for agriculture along with competitive events. Um, and so we are adding a lot of new events this year, gearing up um, to be at our new facility and being year round. So one of those events that we're adding this year is actually a ranch rodeo. And that's going to be the end of June, June 29th and 30th. Um, so we continue to to add more things and get ready, ready for that new facility. It's a Kansas City tradition ever since 1899. 99. Yep, mm -hmm. the American Royal. And everybody doesn't know this, but it is a 501c3. And it is a nonprofit organization. Uh, so that is still available. We appreciate you coming on board. Let everybody know AmericanRoyal.com. You can check out all the facilities and uh, and also check out what's going on with the new facility and uh, more importantly, all the events. Sarah, thank you very much for joining us here at Better Horses. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Sarah. Now we got to take a break. We're going to be right back right after these sponsors. I'm Ed Adams. And I'm Merle Arbo. And we'll be right back. Internal parasite control is critical to your horse's health, but isn't always easy. Some worms are as stubborn as they are dangerous. Luckily, there's Panicure Finbendazole from Merck Animal Health. It works in a powerful and extremely safe way, so it's tough on parasites, but gentle on horses, making it a safe choice for foals, weanlings, and even thin or debilitated horses. Consult your veterinarian for assistance in the diagnosis, treatment, and control of parasitism, and ask how Panicure can become part of your deworming strategy. Learn more at MerckAnimalHealthUSA.com. We're here for the hardworking, the resilient. We're for the people who measure their days by what needs to get done, not by hours. Where kids learn responsibility at a young age and generations work side by side. Where work doesn't pause for holidays or bad weather, it just gets harder. Where value and hard work means more than the clothes you wear. We're Klein Schmidt's Western Store, Higginsville, Missouri. Routine dental examination and treatments are essential for high quality horse care. To prevent potential problems, a horse's mouth should be examined at least once a year. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins, equine field service veterinarian at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center. We can examine the mouth and provide a treatment plan to meet the needs of each client and their horse. Visit us at ksvhc.org the Veterinary Health Center, to discover, to teach, to heal. It's time to mark your calendar for one of the top horse events of the season, the 27th annual Equifest of Kansas. This all-breed horse fair is coming to Salina, Kansas, beginning Thursday, March 14th through Sunday, March 17th. World-renowned clinicians, including Guy McLean, the Jerry Diaz family, Julie Goodnight, Patrick Sullivan, and Sally Batten. Catch a special Thursday night show, plus the most popular competitions with ranch rodeo, barrel race, and breakaway roping. Wall-to-wall -wall shopping for all things horse. For more information, go to equifestofks.com. You know, Merle, I just love talking about the American Royal and their greatest anniversary coming up this year. Yes, yeah, that that for sure is, is one of a neat Kansas City events. You know, I always especially like the barbecue contest. <laughs> And it's a fun. And just to remind everybody, if you're not there, the Ameri the Equifest is going on right now. That's Equifest Kansas. And if you haven't thought about it, we recommend that everybody check out the Road to the Horse. That's going to be the World Championship of Colt starting. And that's going to be March 21st through the 24th in Lexington, Kentucky. And we recommend everybody go out there and uh, check that out. And uh, other than that, if you haven't checked out one thing, check out betterhorses.com. Yes, and also look for us on television at RFD-TV and the Cowboy Channel, as well as your local broadcast stations.
And we also want to thank the new streaming channel, Equus TV, is picking up uh, better horses. And you can check us out on YouTube if you haven't caught all of our episodes. And more importantly, on podcasts. If you miss this radio show, just type in podcast wherever you get your podcast and type in better horses. Well, Merle, that's it. I want to tell you, hey, thank you for joining me. I really look, uh, look forward to this. And more importantly, and I want all of our listeners to remember, I want you to be good buckaroos and buckarettes. Mind your mom and dad's. Be brave, but don't take any chances out there. Until next time, I'm Ed Adams. And I'm Merle Arbo. Happy trails, and always ride for the brand. Mm-hmm.